Hi guys and welcome to this sixth video in the But How Do It Know companion video series and today we're going to be looking at the register. So if we pull up the diagram from John's book on page 41, we can see that the register is uh, made up of uh, a byte connected to an uh, eight uh, gate enabler and uh, that together comprises a register. So you have uh, eight bits of input, eight bits of output and uh, a set signal and an enabled signal. So I said before that we we're going to be building a register from scratch using uh, only NAND gates because it, because it would be too big. But I made a, a schematic here of what that would look like. So as we can see, uh, it would take up two full breadboards just to, uh, to create our, our register. And if we look at it, we can see that uh, we have in the middle all the one-bit memories that um, have been constructed as we done in um, the previous video and uh, you see that you have eight of them side by side then on top of that for each one you have uh, an enabler that is uh, built there uh, consisting uh, of an AND gate uh, so for each of those one bit memories you can see the uh, orange wire they are all connected together and that goes down on the bottom right to uh, the set signal and for the enablers uh, there's an input of each that's connected via another orange wire and that goes down on the bottom left to uh, the enable signal then in the middle between uh, the one bit memories and the enablers you can see that there is um, some blue wires connecting the output of the one bit memory to one of the inputs of the enablers. So if we were to construct this, um, that would function exactly like uh, we expect, like a register should. But it would be quite big. Uh, you need two full breadboards, like I mentioned, just to build one of those. And in John's computer, there is a few of these registers, so you would quickly end up with a very big uh, setup. Now, if we add to that, uh, a test rig or test bench now you can see in the middle I added a bunch of LEDs here and uh, these would be connected to uh, the output of the enablers and uh, further to the right you would have um, I put here a dip switch um, that could be used to set the input memories to one or zero depending on what uh, value we select so later we're gonna build for our register uh, a similar uh, test bench so uh, I'll go into a bit more detail then about how uh, it works but like I mentioned uh, in our case we're not going to uh, be using a, a homemade register if you want and we're going to be using a chip from the SN74HC series uh, that will act as a register for us. That chip is the SN74HC373 and uh, it is called, its official name is Octal Transparent D-Type Latches with three state outputs. So if we pull up the, uh, the data sheet for this chip here, we can see that uh, it's a bit bigger than uh, the SN7400, it has 20 pins. and uh, But you will see that it's uh, set up exactly like uh, the register that uh, John describes. So you can see on pin 20 you have your voltage, on pin 10 you have the ground, just like the other chips that we used. Uh, on pin 1 you have what is called the output enable, so this is uh, actually our enable signal. And on uh, the pin 11, you have something that's called uh, latch enable, which uh, actually is our set uh, signal. In between these pins, 
you have uh, eight pairs of pins, uh, each label uh, D and Q, and these will be uh, the inputs and the outputs of uh, the register. So each D pin is uh, an input, and each, each Q pin is uh, the corresponding output. So if we go back to our uh, little test, test bench here, sorry, uh, I have set up one of these chips here on uh, the test bench. So we have our uh, ground here, our VCC on top. We have our set signal here that's connected to a push button uh, and the corresponding circuitry here like we saw last time. So this set button uh, will be activated like this. And on this side, we have our enable uh, signal going into to pin 1. And uh, here, something special is going on. Uh, the, 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 the enable signal of the 373 chip is something that's called an active low uh, signal. It means that it's inverted. So what uh, this boils down to is that you need to have the pin sending a one signal for the enabler to be off and sending a zero signal or to ground for the enabler to be on. So in order to achieve this, we've uh, reversed the way we've set up our uh, push button down here. So what we've done is we've taken our, uh, our, resist our resistor, we put it to the 5 volts here going to uh, this pin and the ground going to this pin. So it will be sending 5 volts uh, by default if you want and when you press uh, we will have our ground coming through and taking over. And uh, so when we use a resistor like this before uh, in the in the previous way we, we called it a pull down resistor when it's used uh, in the other way around, it's called a pull-up resistor. So we have uh, all our circuitry in place now, and uh, what's left is to add a test bench to this to be able to test it out. So I'm going to build a test bench that's similar to what we saw in the schematic before, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've added an extra breadboard here at the bottom so that we can test uh, our circuit. So what I've placed on it is a series of eight LEDs. Each LED is connected uh, to ground via a, a resistor. And uh, it's also connected with a wire to each of the Q outputs of our register. On the right side, I've set up here a dip switch module. Each of the switches is connected to uh, our VCC, so to our 5 volts. And in the back, I don't know if you can see it properly here, we have uh, eight uh, pull-down uh, resistors that allow us to send either ground or 5 volts through these wires by activating these switches. On top, we have the same uh, circuit as before with our uh, set signal here and our enable signal here, both activated using uh, push buttons. So uh, let's connect the circuit. All right, so in theory, we should be able to set uh, some bits here and save them in the register and uh, get them out using the enabler. So I'm going to just turn on one bit here. We'll set it uh, into our register and uh, get it out via the enabler. So as we can see, uh, there is one light that is turning on that corresponds to the bit that we set here. I'm going to set now uh, an alternating bit pattern here, 0101, 0101. Set it in and uh, recuperate it via the enabler. So we can see that the values are alternating here. Now I can set this all to zero just like before. We'll see that it doesn't have an impact on what's uh, remembered inside of the register. 
we should be able to turn all these bits on as well. And all the LEDs should turn on. So we can see that everything is turning on. Clear our register. Now there is nothing uh, inside. So there it is. We have a fully functional and tested uh, register. And we're going to be using quite a few of these as we build our, our project. So um, in the next video, we're going to be laying out the foundation of our project. Uh, using a couple of breadboards and a wooden plank also that I'm going to set up. And uh, this is going to allow us to start setting up the next component of our uh, project, which is going to be the bus. So we're going to set that up, and we're going to talk about that in uh, two videos. But uh, stay tuned for the next one, where we will uh, be laying out our uh, uh, groundwork for the rest of the project. See you soon. Thank you.